Welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is a Fast Break OT edition. Today we are talking about the rookies of the NBA in the 2017-2018 season. Dave did the math 22% way through the NBA season. Yeah. So we're close enough for a quarter of the we way call through. It. We're talking about the rookies. We're doing our rookie report, the top 10 rookies in the NBA. I'm Sean Anderson, alongside me is Dave Oster, and we did our own list of top 10 rookies. Then yep. we compiled them together into a terrible Frankenstein monster. Oh, yeah. We put them together for you. So leading off the top 10, we have De'Aaron Fox, the guard from the Sacramento Kings. Then we have number nine, Josh Jackson, the forward from the Phoenix Sun. And then at eight, we have the big baller himself, Lonzo <laughs> Ball from the Los Angeles Lakers. Then at seven, we have Dennis Smith from the Dallas Mavericks. And then at six, we have guard from the Utah Jazz, Donovan Mitchell. So Dave, looking at that top five right there, the bottom five, bottom five. right there, looking at those five, Darren Fox, what have you seen so far? What is he, where does he need to improve, at least, for the I mean, Sacramento Kings? It's been no surprise, really. We knew kind of what he was going to be coming out. He's a very aggressive defensive player. Mm -hmm. uh, his offensive skill set, still a little limited. Honestly, the, this team has uh, struggled a bit more than I expected. Yeah. And one of the big things is because of their point guard play. I, they went out in the offseason and picked up um, George Hill. George Hill after last year where he popped off, and this year he's just nowhere to be found. He's not the same George Hill. Yeah. So De'Aaron Fox has kind of gotten more minutes and pushed out there a little bit further than I expected, maybe out of his comfort zone a little, but he's got to develop that offensive game. He's, I think he needs to find his pair down low. Yeah, and he's had a really decent you know, couple games, couple yeah. spurts. Again, he's a rookie. He's going he's gonna to develop Ups and it. downs. And one thing, too, a young team obviously had a nice stretch after that boogie trade. But the one thing, too, you're bringing in free agents, you really haven't gelled yet yeah. if you are the Sacramento Kings. I, I think that De'Aaron Fox should be fine, but the spurts that he has been great in, I've really loved what oh, I've yeah. seen. You obviously see why he's going number five. Defensively, he's been great, and then offensively. His, his first step speed is still ridiculous. Like I'm surprised. I know how quick he is. I'm still surprised watching him. And that's the thing. 26% from three, that's not great for De'Aaron Fox, but that's what that's, we expected. Yeah. So I think De'Aaron Fox, if he develops a little more as a playmaker and this team around him, I think it's been more about the team yeah. rather than De'Aaron himself. Uh, De'Aaron, I think, will definitely see a boost in his play playing abilities and playing mm -hmm. levels because he starts to impress more once these shots from his teammates start Starts going falling, yeah. And once he's able to at least create more space for himself. Uh, but De'Aaron Fox has, has been impressive. He just needs to do a little more, but let's go now to Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson defensively, that's all I need to talk <laughs> about. Offensively, Josh Jackson's been terrible. Defensively, we, we don't talk about that. But defensively, he has been probably the best player defensively when we talk about Our rookies. rookies yeah. Guarding guys one-on-one, -on -one, Josh Jackson has been absolutely insane. His length, his athleticism has been absolutely dominant. We knew about this coming into yeah. the league, and he's been great on a terrible Phoenix Suns <laughs> team. So looking at Josh Jackson defensively, he's been fantastic. But let's go to Lonzo, because oh. obviously Ricky Widmer, what do you have him at? Uh, where do you have him for point cards? Like 10? You yeah. have him as the 10th point card going into the season. Yep. Right now he's 8th when it comes to rookies. <laughs> but looking at Lonzo, what have you liked and what does Lonzo need to improve on? What I've liked is his ability to rebound and create good looking shots for his team. Like his rebounding, he's a 6'6 six, six guard and the Lakers kind of use, a, they, they still a little bit of page out of the uh, Thunders playbook where they let their guard go back for rebounding, they let their bigs box out and they set fast break opportunities. And he mm -hmm. is always looking to push the ball, push the pace, and that's really what Luke Welton wants. So that, that was a great pairing. His shooting has been god-awful. Oh, shit. He, he, he cut the hair. He tried they breaking the, the hairs. Hair. Of, he had a pretty uh, nice dunk against the Bulls. He had, he had a couple of highlight plays, but he still looked like trash offensively. Um, that's what you're going to get. But like, it's surprising thing defensively, Lonzo's been great. He's 6'6". Six, six. He's got a long but, wingspan. But we always thought he was a slow player. We, we looked at the De'Aaron Fox, the matchup between that. It, he when does he gamble a abused, lot, though. We, but the thing, he got abused by yeah. De'Aaron Fox, but so far he hasn't been abused defensively. Uh, Not... Not too much. I mean, Pep Bev did pop off him in the first game of the year. But, but that uh, was because Pep Bev was <laughs> bodying him up. That was also his first game. Yeah. We're being hard on Lonzo, statement. but we're not being hard on De'Aaron Fox. I think, De right. I think Lonzo obviously has Lonzo has played better than De'Aaron Fox. No yeah. argument here. Uh, I think the expectation for Lonzo was just up here, which means, you know, in comparison to where you're playing now. I also think consistency has been a problem for Lonzo because, you know, when he's going up against Cans, he, he's destroying Cans. He can dumpster the Suns. Yeah, when yeah. he's playing the Suns, he's going to beat them up. But, like, when he's playing better teams, he's struggling a bit out there. Yeah. And obviously, he's been benched in the fourth quarter against better Huge teams. Huge concern. So that's one thing where the consistency hasn't been there for Lonzo, but you still see the spark. You still see the reason why he went number two. And the stat two. line, he, he does, that's the thing. Like, even if he doesn't have a great shooting night, mm -hmm. he's still giving you, like, seven boards, seven 
rebounds. The thing is, he needs to learn when to take shots, when to not take shots. Yeah. He, at this point, everybody's giving him wide open looks because they don't even have to guard him. But even then, <laughs> if his confidence is able to come back, <laughs> That's you the, possibly yeah. think when he's having wide open shots, we saw it in college, he's gonna start those shots down. are going to come in. Yeah. And, and I think Lonzo, again, has that room to grow. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't know exactly where he's going to finish this season when it comes to the rookie report, but right now, Eight, I think, is a room bit, to improve. I think it's a little bit low for Lonzo. I think he's definitely going to move yeah. up a little bit. But seven, let's go to Dennis Smith. This man is absolutely explosive and has the highest usage <laughs> for a rookie. They're using him 29.5% of the time. That's like Russ level out there. <laughs> Dennis Smith has been a little inefficient, but that's just because just a, he's just a tad bit. shooting so damn much. He's oh. not a terrible team. What do you like from Dennis Smith out there? Uh, he's an explosive player. He's everything we tagged him as coming in, and he has not failed to deliver. Like, everything is... Everything that he does is uh, pretty dynamic. I like the speed. Um, you know, we had the concerns about his personality, but really, no issues. Him and Carlisle get along great. Carlisle's actually spoken out about how positive he has been in that experience. So I think it's honestly like a perfect fit for this team because you have a great older mentor in Dirk. You have a good young team. You have Harrison Barnes. You got Yogi. You got Seth. Like they've got a, a great core. I think he was a perfect fit for this team. And then go to final one, Donovan Mitchell. What do you like from Donovan Mitchell out of Louisville? Dude, dude's just a killer. Yeah. I mean, like his scoring has been ridiculous. And also defensively. I mean, this is the thing. He was very well Doesn't get enough credit. Super yeah. explosive. Good defender. I think obviously there's been some games where he struggled, but every rookie has had those problems. Yeah, but, but you I think see he's been on one of the floor. better surprises. He's he's been really great for yep. for the Jazz, and, and and the Jazz really haven't been able to find their guy. Possibly going on later through you know his career, possibly could be one of the guys oh, yeah. out there in Utah. Let's go to John Collins though, because he is our fifth player when it comes to the rookie report. I forgot we're going to pop up the graphic now. Uh, John <laughs> Collins at five. Jason Tatum at four from the Boston Celtics. Three, Laurie Markkinen. Two, Kyle Kuzma. And number one, shocker, Ben Simmons from the Philadelphia 76ers. John Collins, though, has been an absolute beast. Yeah, I sort of love this. I he, he is kind of a take-back player, and just his aggression down low, his ability to score, his, him fighting for rebounds on a team where, let's be honest, they're not always trying to win, but the Hawks are undefeated, mm. you know? What? That, that horrible joke on Reddit. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't it's when they joke. when they win, they win. When they lose, they're tanking, so they're still winning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. But <laughs> that was bad. Anyways, let's move on now. Uh, I don't want to talk about Jason Tatum and Laurie Markkinen by players because you put Laurie as two. Yeah. I put Jason Tatum as I think my third. No, I put him. Yeah, I put him as my third rookie. So I had Jason Tatum higher than Laurie Markkinen. Yep. You had Laurie Markkinen higher than Jason Tatum. What have you liked from Laurie? And I'll tell you why Jason Tatum is better. <laughs> I like that the Bulls are trusting him. I like the fact that he's not afraid to take shots. And I like the fact that he's going out and proving people wrong. The concern of him coming into the NBA was he's he's too weak, he's too thin, he's not uh, dominant enough big to be batting people down low for boards. And he's averaged like almost a double. He's had a ton of double doubles. I think like 10 mm -hmm. double doubles already this season. And he is showing no fear of going down low, batting people up. Uh, obviously, the shot is not falling all the time. That Lakers game was awful. I think he shot like 17 times, made like four. Uh, brutal. But to, for the most part, that was like his second bad game. Outside of that, he's been spectacular. He's been a ray of hope. And he's honestly been one of the surprises because this is one of the better directions of the NBA is bigs who can shoot from the outside. You want a four who can stretch the ball. He's a seven-footer. Like, there's there's nothing not to love. Well, the one thing that I didn't love, at least for him, is, and not, not, not didn't love, but at least didn't love compared to Jason Tatum, is yeah. his team's not fucking winning. Well, and yeah, also, there's that. with Jason Tatum, there is one player, one rookie, in the top 15 when it comes to defensive rating. It's Jason Tatum. He is the <laughs> highest player when it comes to the Boston Celtics defensively. 97 defensive rating. That's Kawhi Leonard <laughs> levels. Jason Tatum defensively has been a defensive stalwart yeah. out there. And offensively, we see the flow of his game out there. He hasn't been asked to do a lot out there offensively right. because you have Ka uh, Kyrie Irving. I was going to say Kawhi Leonard. You have <laughs> Kyrie Irving. You have Al Horford. You have Jalen Brown. But Jason Tatum is just smooth and crispy out there. Yeah. This team's winning, and he is a huge part of this. He's getting defensive win shares. He's just doing everything defensively and also offensively. He's not limiting this team. He's fitting perfectly into this system for Brad Stevens. Uh, you said the word, though, system. How much of this is credited to Brad Stevens' system, and how much is Jason Tatum? Because you could pull, you could throw in Terry Rozier and this team's going to be worse. You don't just get a 97 <laughs> defensive rating. Well, yeah, rating scary Terry is not quite wing. on the same level. As a wing, you just don't get a, a defensive rating as a, at a 97. You don't see the, the, this this level from a rookie, this mindset yeah. and this composure from a rookie at this level. I understand that he's being plugged into a system, but Laurie's just being plugged to shoot and chuck out there. I mean, yeah, but he's like 
doing extremely well at it. He is, but those numbers are going to fall. Without a system. Those numbers are going to fall. Jason Tatum is going to be able to, comp- I, I think, continue this. I think Jason Tatum... No argument. I was just asking the question because the Warriors a player without a system, really, and Jason Tatum is on the best team in the NBA. I just love what one of our Bulls fans says. It's not hoi ball, it's heave ball. It's heave ball. I love it. Uh, yeah. Let's go to number two, though, Kyle Kuzma. Shocker of Dude. the draft right now. Late first rounder. <laughs> Kyle Kuzma, do you think that this is the peak for Kuzma, though? <laughs> Uh, I don't do think, think so. Can grow? I think he can. That's that's the funny thing. Is like I don't. I think this is awesome because you're watching him pair up with Lonzo and this young team. Mm-hmm. And he came in. He took over that starting role. He took that from Julius Randle. He took that from Larry Nance. Even though there was an injury, but like it was still leaning towards him as well. So you have a young kid who they're trusting with. I think he's playing the most minutes for any rookie outside. I think he is just playing the most minutes for any rookie. His usage is pretty high. He's good. Re- he's good at rebounding. Him on an open three is like half a guarantee. Like he is just lights out shooter from the outside. Obviously he has his defense's troubles, and that's kind of one of the reasons why he gets subbed out against. That's one of the concerns. We can expose him, but a rookie who's able to drop like 15 and 8, are you kidding me? Yeah, Kyle Kuz has been fantastic. But let's go on to the final one. The guy who's been absolutely ridiculous. We don't really need to talk about him. But ben boy? Simmons. Ben Simmons, a two-time wet boy already. already. <laughs> I I don't think it's fair. It's the reason why we didn't put Mike James in as a, as a Well, Mike James is 27. Rookie. He's 27, but, I mean, technically, you know, Ben was drafted last year, so, I mean, it's a little cheating because Ben shirt? Simmons, are, he was red-shirted. <laughs> so he's a red-shirt rookie, but Ben Simmons. Yeah. I think he could possibly be a top five player in this league the way he's been playing. Yeah, he is. He does everything. That's the fuck. Mm-hmm. That, he, he's on a young team, which is the reason why they're going to lose games. But he does everything for them. He rebounds. He, he just doesn't shoot threes. He doesn't shoot. Never ask that man to shoot a three ball. Yeah. The one thing, though, Ben Simmons. But he's silky smooth around the rim. Offensively, defensively, playmaking. It's everything that you wanted. Yeah. That, that number one overall pick when they took that him hype. back then. Ben Simmons clearly the number one overall rookie. It's not even close. Yeah, like it was it, like we had. Some it's like one, and, some space, some more space, and Kuzma. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is very similar to probably Ben Simmons just when he came out of the draft because some people are saying that Brandon Ingram should be the number one overall pick, and I never faulted for that, <laughs> even though that's not true because I put Brandon Ingram <laughs> number one in some of my mock It's drafts. okay to admit we're wrong. Uh, I was totally, I was totally wrong. Yeah, but Ben Simmons has been absolutely fantastic. Let us know who you think the top rookies. In the NBA, have been this season. Let us know in the comments down below. But for Dave Oster, I'm Sean Anderson. This is past Thanksgiving, but happy Thanksgiving, everybody.